Well, hello again. I hope that things are going well for you today and that you're having a great day. Or if it's maybe not too great up to this point in time, that it gets better from this point out and that the balance of your day is an awesome day. I hope, I pray, that everything goes well from you and that you are blessed from this point out, that you have, again, a really great day. Topic, topic at this video is along the lines of Christians crying over money. A lot of pit Christians do cry over money. <clears throat> the question ultimately becomes, when a Christian is crying over money, is that a good thing or is that a bad thing? And it's obviously really going to depend on a couple of very important factors. Giving is a sensitive, giving of money is a very sensitive topic for a lot of Christians. And, and let's be realistic. Money is important to us. It's a, it's a driving force in our lives. We, most of us, want more of it. It may be a vague sense of, I want more. Um, it could be very specific that I want more things. I want more glitter in my life. I want to go on trips. I want to have more security. If I had umpteen thousand dollars or a hundred thousand dollars stored away in a bank account somewhere, I'd feel so much more secure. There's a lot of reasons that Christians want money. A lot of them, maybe most of them, same reasons that the ordinary lost people want more money. Same variety of motivations. What complicates it sometimes for many Christians is that then you go to church and because of genuine needs as a rule, let's be very positive about this, genuine needs within the, the congregation, within the fellowship, there's a need for people to give more. Because when you look around, if you have 100, 200, 500 people sitting in the congregation, remember that most of them probably are not giving substantially. It's a $1 bill, a $5 bill, the, the, the offering plate comes by so quick, they just drop something in there real fast. And a lot of the people that you see when you look around Sunday morning are really giving very little into that plate. So the, the pastor and the deacons have really no choice but following the dictates of the congregation. There are things that have to be done, things that have to be paid for. And it's their job to keep the, the people informed and to make sure that there's enough money there to meet all of these needs. So they're encouraging to give for you to give more than what you have been giving. Doesn't matter how much you've been giving, they, they really want you to give more. And, and it's quite valid quite often. Sometimes this is rooted also in the tithe. And the tithe being, you probably know, literally just means a tenth, a tenth of your income. And the pastor and the deacons push to tithe and they apply pressure and they want people to do this. And to my way of, of understanding the, the scripture, and all you have to do is call any sin, local synagogue, talk to a few uh, rabbis there at the synagogue, ask them if they collect the, the tithe, what do they do with the money that they collect from the tithe, and they'll be very happy to tell you that they don't teach tithing. The temple is gone. The tithe was all about supporting the, the temple and the priest distributing the, the money. But the, 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 the temple is gone, so they don't tithe anymore. So why is it that we are tithing? Well, that's a multifaceted answer to, to that, but a, a lot of it is just simple dollars and cents. We feel as though we, we need more money. And there's also a question of blessing. The, the, the story is told of a missionary, I think it was in South America, in a small village. He was ministering to the people. He was teaching them scripture, but he was not teaching. They were so poor, he did not teach them tithing, um, what it was, why they should do it, how they would be blessed. And he came under criticism from other missionaries who 
refocused his attention on the reality that if these villagers would start giving more liberally um, and tithing, it was all focused on tithing, then God would bless them and they just wouldn't be so poor. Well, this opened up his eyes and he started doing that. He started teaching tithing and it took a while before they, they really grasped the concept and went with the program. And as participation in the village increased, there was more and more money in the village and more and more villagers were seeing that they were getting, let's call it, use the word wealthier. They were doing much better financially. When I heard that story, it, it seemed a little confusing um, because the tithe, as I understand it, that was Old Testament, that was under the law. We're under grace now. There's a, a different standard. But it remains to be seen that when you have people giving testimony, they will, they will say, once I started tithing, there was just no stopping the Lord's blessings. He was just giving me more and more and or reducing my expenses more and more so that my money went further and further. And you'll find many, many people. You'll find, I, would, I guess I should say, all people that are tithing um, will give testimony to the fact that God blesses the tithe. He really, really does. But then I ask myself regularly, if tithing is really not scriptural for a Christian, that it was under the law, and now we're under grace, why is it that this is true, that tithers are being blessed? And this was a matter of prayer for a long time, on many occasions, before my eyes were finally opened. And the, the answer is not that they were giving 10% under the law, but that 10% actually amounted to liberal giving that they were doing. They were giving God lots of money, and they were doing it primarily, I, I assume, they were doing it out of love of God and, and love of Scripture, and they wanted to do what was right before God, and so God blessed them. Blessed them not because they were tithing on a technical level, but rather because they were giving liberally to the kingdom. That's what they were doing. So then it follows that what remains is just liberal giving. Now, you'll not find this following statement as a piece of scripture anywhere in the Bible, at least not that it comes to mind off the top of my head. But the reality is, the truism is, especially under grace, that you cannot outgive God. You cannot outgive God. God wants you, it's kind of a, a measure of your love for him and your commitment to Jesus Christ, how liberally you give. Now, especially if you're, if you're a new Christian, you've just been saved recently, finances are really tight, there's a limit to what you can do, and 1% may be giving liberally. That may be stretching the, the budget, but you want to do it. God wants you to do it. You give liberally, you give out of love. And what this winds up doing is kind of breaking Christians sometimes down into two categories. There are Christians, especially new Christians, but it's other, all, also other Christians who have been saved for quite some time that cry, shed tears, literally or and or verbally, crying over the fact that they have to give so much money every week to the church for the Lord to go into the kingdom to do this that and the other and it hurts and finances are are tough and so they cry over this they cry over the fact that the pastor and deacons are always pressuring them to give more give more give more and they literally shed tears uh, streaming down their face or just verbal tears whining about what's going on. In one sense, it can be argued that this crying over finances never goes away. Because when you mature as a Christian, as you gain knowledge, as you fall more and more and more in love with our Father in Heaven, our Savior Jesus Christ, and are driven more by the Holy Spirit, 
you will find yourself still crying or starting up again, crying over putting money in the offering plate every week. But this time, your tears will be motivated by a different scenario. Yes, more mature Christians cry because they can't give more. They understand what the money is really going for. They understand from Scripture why God even gives us any mo money, why He blesses us financially, and it's to benefit others. And yes, it is to help grow the kingdom. It's to support the work that's going on. And so the tears come then when you mature as a Christian because you want to give more, but you're unable to. You're up to 8% or 10%, 12%, 15%. I know people that have been at 16% and really tried to bump it up to 20%, but their budget just wouldn't handle it. They had to back off. It was not God's will that they be given 20%, but they could give the 16% and everything went along fine and he blessed them and they just knew that they were honoring God with their, their giving. So if you're crying over money, ask yourself this, why am I crying over money? Am I crying because it hurts that I'm giving so much of my money, whether it's 1%, 5%, 10%, do you regret giving that money? It hurts and you're crying over that? Or are you crying because you right now can't give more than what you are giving, but you really do want to give more? I hope it's a situation where you're shedding tears because you want to give more and more as time goes by. You ready for that? Praise the Lord.